Hey guys, welcome back to the Black Axe Ranch in Sturgeon Lake, Minnesota. I'm Ron Anik. I figured you'd like to go with me while I do some fence checking. So those of you that watch our channel regularly, you know that we've been putting up a whole lot more fence than we had when we first started back in December with these animals. So that means we gotta check these fences a lot more often. And you can see I gotta still pick up the remnants of the old fencing, but we'll get to it. Not everything in one day. So of course, the fence that we replaced was barbed wire, while well, most of it anyway. We still got a little bit to replace way over on the uh, other side over there, but everything that you're looking at here now, this is new as of this year. It either went up brand new or replaced existing barbed wire. And they're curious what I'm doing too. Especially Thor there. Anyway, I come out here, oh, I don't know, a couple times a week at least just to check everything, make sure everything's okay. One of the things I'm looking at are the posts, making sure that the posts are okay, nothing's broken, nothing's starting to rot, although at this point, if they're rotten, that means uh, I uh, really got taken advantage of when I got these posts. And we're checking to make sure that everything is nice and tight. These ratchets are still intact. We're making sure that the wire is intact. It's not stretched. We've got these crimps here that we check, make sure that they're not broken or showing any sign of uh, yeah, deterioration of any kind. Everything looks good here. We're also checking to make sure that the posts are still you know, in alignment for the most part. We got a lot of tension on that uh, wire there, so there's gonna be some push and pull here <laughs> mostly pull now wherever we have these kind of springs like this with the ratchets we're checking a couple of things here one we want to make sure that everything you know is secure it's in place it's where it needs to be we've got eight wires that are basically eight inches eight inches eight inches and then going from there it's 12 12 12 12 so eight strands of wire that works out to about seven feet in height we're making sure that the ratchets are still intact. We're making sure that the springs look okay. Now, in this case here, you can see there's two notches on these, on these springs here. The first one is 125 pounds of tension. The one that's inside here that you can't see is 250. So at some point, and even that, that one up there is even worse. At some point, I'm gonna have to come out here and uh, tighten these fences up. I mean, they're not bad right now but we'll have to come out here and do that. Now, one of the problems that we have, I get where you can see, but if you can see, they're sticking their heads out right up to about here, wire here, here's where they're going. So they're sticking their heads through and eating on the other side of that fence. That is definitely something we have to watch to make sure that they don't break these fence lines here these wires all that area that I made for them and of course they got to stick their heads through the fence and eat the part that they uh, shouldn't really be eating but uh, we got a couple of ideas to fix that I won't go into it now but that'll probably be more of a more of a next year thing And if you remember, we used a lot of trees to hold our uh, to hold our fence into place. You know, one, it just kind of ran with the, uh, well, we got enough trees, so we just kind of ran with the, uh, with the trees instead of putting in a post. I was a little bit worried that the wind would blow the trees, the trees would sway back and forth, and that it was going to bust these wires, but uh, so far that hasn't been a problem. But we are making sure that the trees, in this case, acting as fence posts are still intact. Everything looks good. These wires are good. Nails are in place. So one thing that I've been doing on and off here, if you remember from one of our previous videos, I kind of learned the hard way that, uh, here's an example of one I did. Well, now I realize it was wrong. So you got the ratchet here and it's eaten into this way here. Well, eventually if this stretches out enough, although this is kind of long here, 
eventually it's going to eat right into this crimp. Well, then what do you do? Nothing. You, you got to completely replace it. And I've been doing that. Also, I only have one crimp here. And I've come to realize that I think two crimps would be better. So I've been coming out here and putting, replacing, putting two crimps on where I had in places that I had one and getting the ratchet so it faces this way. Now it's eaten into this long line here. It's secured to the tree, but theoretically I should never have to take that part out. It's just always gonna eat into the line that way. Here is a perfect example of what I was talking about. This is one of my original ones with one crimp, and you can see I'm already right up against that other crimp there. I have no place to go. Luckily we got probably enough tension. It's also higher. I don't have to worry about it, but that's exactly what I was talking about. So we'll end up replacing that before winter for sure. Everything's looking pretty good. It's actually a beautiful fall day out here today. We had some pretty cool temperatures. We had frost last night, actually fairly heavy frost. I was surprised. It was 34 degrees when I got up this morning. Now we're going to go through the fence here because I don't feel like walking through all that cabbage over there. Of course, we'll be watching our backs, make sure that nobody's going to horn us in the back here. Same thing here, and if you remember from the videos, this was actually our original corner that we put up when we started expanding. So it has held up really, really well. Everything looks good. The ratchets look good. Everything is intact. Nothing's busted, broken. All right, we'll just keep moving along here. Now you can tell the difference between the grass, well not grass, weeds, cabbage, whatever you want to call it. And over here, they have really been mowing this down lately. So everything still looks good. Here we've utilized T-posts along, uh, along with the trees. This gets a little thick in here, so. And obviously they don't come in here too often. Or maybe they do. This fence here was the fence we ran and connected to our old barbed wire fence. And if those of you that remember, this tree that I'm walking up to right here now, this pine, that was the original end corner here. And what I'm looking at here now, this was their original area. He hasn't been playing with his toy much. I'm kind of surprised. I put that cone on there four or five days ago. He usually knocks it off right away. So here you can see this is the original barbed wire. So this probably, in fact, yes, it is. This is the only original piece of fence left of the original area that we had for these animals when we got them back in December. I gotta say it's held up pretty well. And then we had the electrical wire, which right now is not working, obviously. Because <laughs> we had to disconnect that as we expanded and we just haven't reconnected it. There's Thor's new ball, which surprisingly he does not play with. That big yellow one that we had over the winter, he loved it. He was always playing with it. Red, eh, loser. So we might have to get a yellow one again. Anyway, the original barbed wire continues right around here, and as you can see, or well, I don't know if you guys would even know the difference, but on the other side of the fence there, I've been uh, trimming back some of the brush, and uh, I limbed this tree here and took out a couple other smaller trees, because we're going to replace this with seven foot high fence. And that seven foot high is going to anchor onto that corner post there where the other seven foot fence is because this area is going to be the area 
because you can see I got post well starting post there that's gonna be an end brace I got another added on brace there but this area here this whole area this is gonna be our makeshift calf pen we are gonna be getting a couple of more animals here in the not too distant future and we want to keep them separated from our current animals They'll be able to sniff each other through the, you know, through the fence and get familiar with each other, but they won't be able to interact with each other. And that's the whole purpose of doing this. Now, I say makeshift, I think temporary would probably be a, a more proper, uh, a proper term because I'm making it with a really wide, I guess you would say, gate. And once it's served its purpose and we want to open up all the area to all the animals and, and let them, let them uh, mix with each other, I'll be able to remove that, that temporary gate area and they'll still be able to wander back and forth through all these areas here without feeling confined. But if we have to separate anybody, again, we can put up that uh, temporary gate and keep those animals separated. We're just trying to look in the future, but we hope we don't have to. And I really don't need to check this area because I was actually out here uh, yesterday checking this, so... It's pretty good. I've been doing more work out here. There you see, I got the spinning Jenny. Cause I was out here putting this extra brace on here because we're gonna have a brace here, brace there, and then one, you know, behind, if you can see it right there. Because it's gonna continue from this fence here and go all the way to there, creating the enclosure. These guys are wondering what I'm doing. or probably figures I'm on his turf. And then our temporary fence that we have in place until we finish the wooden fence. I think I showed some of this to you guys the last time here, but we are slowly but surely getting there. You can see now we're we're putting more pieces in. The plan is eventually it's going to follow this whole line of posts here with two lines of high tensile wire above that. So this fence is going to be seven feet high, just like the other ones, because we don't want to go through a winter like we did last year. It was just bad luck on our part that uh, the first winter we had animals was record-breaking snowfall for most of Minnesota. So anyway, you can see here, this is eventually gonna be the gate. We're gonna have a double gate put in there. And you can see these uh, fence pieces here slowly just kind of marching along and uh, it's getting there, it's getting there. Hey, Sapphire, how are you? Huh? How are you? Yeah, come see me, come on. Come on, there you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How are you? Huh? How are you? Yeah, it's just me. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, chin scratch. We love the chin scratch. She's cute, but she's our biggest troublemaker. She's the one that sticks her head through the fence most of the time.
And we are definitely getting some beautiful colors here. We really got lucky when we got this property because we got a lot of birch, we got a lot of maple, and we got a lot of oak. And uh, fall is really beautiful around here. We get, and then we got chickens in the background too, but we, we get some just beautiful colors around here. And of course, whenever I'm trying to do some work outside here, they have to come and plant themselves right smack in the middle of where I'm working. So that pretty much ends the work for now. But we hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you haven't done so already, hit that little subscribe button down below. It shows your support and helps motivate us to make more videos. We'll see you guys next time.